speak. Then stick your head out and yell, I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! First, you've got to get mad! I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! First, you've got to get mad! The invention of television has made it possible for us to communicate through a combination of sights and sounds. Modern means of communication have overcome the ancient barriers of time and distance. In which is visible a whole new era of communication. In one generation, voice and vision have transcended space. Science, engineering, and organization have harnessed the ratio between light and sound. Do you suffer because your storehouse of words is smaller than you'd like it to be? Well then, hey, hey, don't touch that channel selector. Well then, kids, you don't have to... Hey, I told you not to touch the selector. This is all for you. 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 Psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it was happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. Mind control in America. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses pattern speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors, trust in the source of the information and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. 
Get ready to read all these words on this page without making a mistake. Look at the letter at the end and remember the sound it makes. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready to read this word the fast way. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Sound it out. Get ready. Kick. Sound it out. Get ready. Kick. What word? Kick. Yes, kick. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. Steel. What word? Steel. Yes, steel. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Play. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Let's read these words the fast way without making a mistake. Get ready. Cut. Yes, height. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, playing. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Get ready. Cut. Yes, height. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, playing. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Boys and girls, pick your reader up. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Either you're with us, either you love freedom and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in-between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's, that's clear. I will continue to make that clear. have an obligation to every last victim of this illegal aggression because all of this carnage has been done in our name. Since World War II, 90 percent of the casualties of war are unarmed civilians, a third of them children. Our victims have done nothing to us. From Palestine to Afghanistan to Iraq to Somalia to wherever our next target may be, their murders are not collateral damage. They are the nature of modern warfare. They don't hate us because of our freedoms. They hate us because every day we are funding and committing crimes against humanity. The so-called war on terror is a cover for our military aggression to gain control of the resources of Western Asia. This is sending the poor of this country to kill the poor of those Muslim countries. This is trading blood for oil. This is genocide. And to most of the world, we are the terrorists. In these times, remaining silent on our responsibility to the world and its future is criminal. And in light of our complicity in the supreme crimes against humanity in Iraq and Afghanistan and ongoing violations of the UN Charter and international law, how dare any American criticize the actions of legitimate resistance to illegal occupation? Our so-called enemies in Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, our other colonies around the world, and our inner cities here at home are struggling against the oppressive hand of empire, demanding respect for their humanity. They are labeled insurgents or terrorists for resisting rape and pillage by the white establishment, but they are our brothers and sisters in the struggle for justice. The civilians at the other end of our weapons don't have a choice, but American soldiers have choices. And while there may have been some doubt five years ago, today we know the truth. Our soldiers don't sacrifice for duty, honor, country. They sacrifice for Kellogg, Brown, and Root. They don't fight for America. They fight for their lives and their buddies beside them because we put them in a war zone. They're not defending our freedoms. They're laying the foundation for 14 permanent military bases to defend the freedoms of ExxonMobil and British Petroleum. 
They're not establishing democracy. They're establishing the basis for an economic occupation to continue after the military occupation has ended. Iraqi society today, thanks to American help, is defined by house rates, death squads, checkpoints, detentions, curfews, blood in the streets, and constant violence. We must dare to speak out in support of the Iraqi people who resist and endure the horrific existence we brought upon them through our bloodthirsty imperial crusade. We must dare to speak out in support of those American war resistors, the real military heroes who uphold their oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, including those terrorist cells in Washington, D.C., more commonly known as the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. Frederick Douglass said, those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are people who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Every one of us, every one of us must keep demanding, keep fighting, keep thundering, keep plowing, keep speaking, keep struggling until justice is served. No justice, no peace. Now, I'll also mention, too, that a fellow that, that uh, has been in touch with me for an awful long time, his brother was in the CIA, or is in the CIA. He will never talk about the CIA to him. He, I mean, he'll never give anything away whatsoever, except one bit of advice. He said, never watch the television. Never watch the television. It's the greatest scientific indoctrination tool ever devised. Haven't you figured that out? It's changed the whole culture of nations, not just one nation. Why do you think it was mandatory that everybody in Britain give access to televisions by the government? Why do you think China is under the, the same program to get everyone with the TV right now? Because they love to have you entertained. Do you really think that? And India is on the same route as well right now too. Most of your ideas and your opinions and how you emulate, because you emulate things, you mimic what you see, as Charles Galton, Darwin, and others have said in the past. It becomes you. You become it. And that's what's happened. It's been very, very, very successful. Never watch the television. You can't watch a movie unless you do it critically, if you watch it critically. Not there to enjoy it. Remember what they say. It's your emotions that get you on. And it's interwoven all these emotional themes all through movies. You're played like a harp. And they embed ideas in you, into you along with the movies. And predictive programming too. So you'll accept that which is still to come. And you'll, and you'll behave the same way as the characters in the movie when it comes. Oh well, what can you do? I'll just watch much music with television. today to meet the woman of my dreams. I've been talking to this girl on the internet for a while. I've actually been trying to save some money to go see this woman. Did you talk, talk to her online? I, I go to the library, believe it or not, to okay. talk to this woman. I met her on MySpace, yeah. and I, she's a very beautiful woman. She's tall, skinny, she's redhead, very beautiful oh. woman. Why don't we do it this way? Because you've, you, you've never met her never before. Never met her. Well, then I'm going to ask you to leave for a few moments, and we'll want to bring her up, let the audience meet her, and then we can both observe you two meeting, which will be Hey Sam, let's bring him back now. Here's Brad. How you doing? It's so good to meet you. <laughs> it's kind of nervous on national TV, I know, but like, I wanted to ask, like, maybe, like, you know, you could be my girlfriend. Well, Brad, I have to tell you, I'm a man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll try anything once. So, in his book, 
from the book Behold a Pale Horse, written by William Cooper, a former naval intelligence officer, in regards to a document concerning the American public. It states, diversion is the primary strategy. The simplest method for securing silent weapons and gaining it is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic system principles while keeping them confused. And this is what these reality shows are doing. Confused about gender, confused about political, confused, confused about um, your role. You understand what I'm saying? Confused about religion, confused about politics. It says keep them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance. Whereas the media, M-E-D-I-A, which stands for Multi-Ethnic Destruction in America, or Maniac European Devils in Action, keeps the adult population's attention diverted from real social issues and captivated by no matters of no real importance. It goes on to say, the schools are kept, keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. One of the things that uh, surprises a lot of people, and it shouldn't because it's publicly known, is that our education system is not about educating as much as it is about socializing. Like the duckling in the chicken yard. If you, if you take that duckling and raise it with the chickens, it's going to be imprinted, it's going to behave like the chickens. And in that very real sense, we perpetuate this. The danger is we don't just perpetuate it. We don't just enculturate it. But it's the only sane way we see to raise our children. And the result is there's no escaping it. C.S. Lewis said... When training, which is Skinner, Pavlov, beats education, civilization dies. He always wears really cool outfits. He's always, um, like, is always signing, and that's why we were doing this, so we could be like him on TAM. document put out 20 years ago um, by John, Dr. John Coleman in the book, The Story of the Committee of 300. Number six, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and make pornography an art form. My question is, does life imitate art, or does art imitate life? If you're going to make pornography an art form, and then make it an art form to whom? Your little babies, my little babies? How does that work? It was like a nightmare. I was down in Galveston two weeks ago on a vacation, and the last day I was there, a convention of, of cheerleaders came, but it was little kids at a competition, and there were like 10-year-olds dressed like prostitutes everywhere. <laughs> And they were being rude to my daughters because they thought they were there for the competition. And, I mean, I was, it was freaking me out. In fact, we even came home a day early. I, I mean, they, people are training their daughters to be whores. Wow. Although education has proven to be highly effective in controlling human behavior, more intensive research would need to be conducted away from the prying eyes of the public. The Tavistock Institute was set up by the British Empire to really study mind control and to scientifically drill down into human behavior and put in textbook form systems of basic control so that could be duplicated out to government and corporate entities. And Tavistock has been involved at every level of social engineering. The Tavistock Clinic was founded in 1920 and operated as part of the Psychological Warfare Division of the British military. It was initially a voluntary outpatient clinic for treatment and research and was made up of general physicians, neurologists, and psychiatrists to facilitate the treatment of neurosis and shell-shocked British soldiers returning home from World War I. 
going through their own publications on Amazon, you can find some of their books cost like eighteen, twenty thousand dollars. And that what that tells me is they don't want the average person to be anywhere near getting their hands on this book because what it gives you inside those books is the teacher's edition to use an abstraction as opposed to the, you know, the students sitting around the class not knowing what the answers to the questions are. There's a group of people who are being given the answers to all the questions about how we act, react, and how we've been understimulated with curiosity in, the more, in, in order to make us more subordinative. Entertainment is kept below the sixth grade level. When you start hearing songs like Laffy Taffy and these kind of songs would hit your lower chakras and vibrate that negative energy, activating your pituitary gland, releasing those hormones. Now you got grown-ass men making songs for 12- and 13-year-olds. I.E. Jay-Z. You understand what I'm saying? So the public is kept busy working, and the result is no time to think. And that's exactly what they produced. And they wrote about it inside of a book called the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, Shaping the Moral, Spiritual, Cultural, Political, and Economic Decline of the United States by John Coleman. Now, John Coleman is the gentleman that wrote the Committee 300. And the Committee 300 is that organ that decide what the trends are going to be in the black community. So when you start seeing people wearing mohawks and tight pants and acting wearing two earrings and acting like women, that was manufactured and put among us. Sheesh, brother. Sheesh, brother. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to understand that. How they did it, they put, they said they devised a system. And the aim of the 12, a total system that they devised jointly by British intelligent operatives from Tavistock University or Tavistock Institute in England. They put these 12 tones among us, all right, and created this thing, um, punk rock and this other uncontrollable music. Look up uh, Operation Paperclip, and it'll tell you all about it. But Ardorno was a system of music that could program the mass music culture capable of eroding the morals of its listeners until they declined to a point where they would totally be degraded by it. And that's what's going on today. The music is bringing us down to an animalistic level, to the point where we don't even care about the art form. We just want a paycheck. Yes, sir. So now it's cool for a Jim Jones to come out talking about na 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 na, and grown folks go for it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, yes, it's cool sir. for these, these cats to come out and talk about I'm stupid, you stupid, we stupid. Why does that appeal to grown men and grown women? Well, that's the thing. All, uh, you know, it's funny. You said all this stuff about rappers and stuff that I thought was pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And then it all started coming out in the news right after you said it right. about how it's a weird sex cult and Illuminati. Right, right. And exactly. now they're all bragging that's what they're in. Yeah, I, I think now they're trying to make it, um, well, how you call you, you, you say it so much it becomes less important. Everybody's they're acclimating. Out. They're just throwing it out there. It's a fad. Everybody needs to do this. Yeah, right. No. It's still dangerous and people are still losing their lives and losing their minds. And ultimately losing their souls. I don't know why they're into this. Uh, reportedly, Lady Gaga, it's been confirmed by multiple friends and managers. Someone has to sleep in the room with her and she's tortured by demons. Right. And, and, and thinks she's followed around by ghosts. Well, yeah, you're telling little girls to worship the devil. Bad right. stuff's going to happen to you. Exactly. <laughs> so they're admitting these things. These things are out there. People are just not taking it serious. This is actual demon possession. And they're going through rituals in front of millions of people in front of our Tony people. Blair admitted that he falls to the ground every morning and is possessed by the angel of light. This is mainstream news. Hmm. And he said, yeah, what's the big deal? And flops around on the ground. The devil's called the angel of light. I mean, hmm. you can't make this up. No, definitely can't. Joe, but Joe Bacon, uh put out a DVD called The Corporation. He said to children, as tomorrow's consumers represent a huge market today, and therefore a fair game. You understand what I'm saying? So they are attacking the children using tones and frequencies. Mm. And parents want to see their children happy. We go out and use our credit cards and our hard-earned dollars to make sure our children are happy. So we get the sneakers and the new sneakers and the new video games and the new songs that come out and this kind of thing. Thinking that we're making our children happy, we're feeding our children's minds and souls to the wolves.
if you don't submit um, to control, if you're a, a radical, you're less likely to be loved. Um, you're not fitting in with society. Um, you're viewed as an outsider. Um, there, so there's a lot of um, uh, social prohibitions about the outsider and the, and the person who's going to upset things. From the time we're very young, we're taught to you know, worship authority, basically, because that's our key to survival as young children. But as adults, we never go through the rites of passage that tell us how to methodically think for ourselves, and thus we're always in a state of extended adolescence. Well, we take all this stuff, whether it's the television or it's the enculturation, the, the schoolyards, the teachers, we take this whole system, we put it into our unconscious mind. And it is the G-I-G-O that comes out, garbage in, garbage out. We simply, in that computer language, have harnessed our own power by accepting all these beliefs as though they are factual. Whether it's the flat earth of uh, Columbus, or it's the idea that I'm not good enough to be or to do something I've dreamed to do. To the degree that the individual loses a sense of what freedom really means for himself, mind control is working. This is the constant battle and the struggle. What does my freedom mean to me? What is it? How deep does it go? How far... I said on the council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions' name has been changed since then. I'm not even sure what to call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records. It owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it on back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It was one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produced music and sang the music and played the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby, Crosby Still Nash and Young. And I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood, and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store, and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, because you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the coven conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He said, the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He says, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. I said, thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and it's placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the eight tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand-chosen witches and 
wizards in a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This it came with a few toys like a happy meal. You know, what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Uh, how it came about being a lyricist is, is weird, because I started out technically, like I used to write all the time, you know, before I started uh, going into the Rain Man thing, you know. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Yeah, well, sometimes they don't want to and they're, they're you know, Gaga, we can't get, you know, the, the frequency's weird and, you know, it's sounding a little bit strange. And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, and, you know, I get a little bit mad. And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna. What has this done to your career? What has it, what has it done to what my career? What has it done to your career? In what way? How has it impacted uh, you? Know, um, my album, touring, record my album is number one all over the world. All over the world. America's the only one because I, I don't want to say too much. But it's not number one in the United States. It's conspiracy, yeah. I don't want to say too much. I'm done. I don't want to say much because I'm hurting. I'm really hurting. I had to ask some friends because I was hearing a lot about her, and so they told me, you know, who she was and what she was doing. And I come from the school of thought. There's just there's just some things that the that the that the public just shouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like things that happen between two people, a wife and a husband, girl. Uh, I just don't think that it's for mass consumption. I just have always felt that way, and I just think that. The whole idea of celebrity and fame has become really convoluted and, you know, kind of bastardized. Like, whereas fame used to be the byproduct of success, and now it's the ultimate goal. And you, if, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there. Like, sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like, you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street, and it's going nowhere. Like, that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people, like forsake their 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 moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame and it's it's not worth it at the end of the day it's really not worth it Martin Lawrence is the guy that showed everybody you can make it from DC to Hollywood and uh, I had a personal stake in his success every time he did something it made me feel inspired and really good and he was always real nice to me he'd sit me down what's going on with you baby boy what what we talk about comedy whatever and, uh, you know, when we did Blue Street, we were promoting it, and Martin had a stroke. He almost died. And then after that, I saw him, and I was like, oh, my God, Martin, are you okay? And he says, I got the best sleep I ever got in my life. <laughs> That's how tough he is. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me. Yeah. What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. There ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. People are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick.
some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. Uh, we all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. I, they had to sting me a million times. Right. I'm still not going to join, but I respect it a little more. All right. uh, you're managed by the company. Uh, and this surprised me. I only found this out. You're managed by the company. You look after S Club 7. You should look after the, the, the Spice Girl, Simon Fuller. Uh, have they tried to, to mold you in any way that people ask you to do things to change the way you look or speak or behave? Um, yeah, one of them tried to mold me into a big triangle shape. And I went, no. <laughs> nah, you know, I've got my own style. Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? Sign Completely of the curse? different. How does it go? No, not at you, not at you people out there in the audience, but this is the difference. Aim it toward Red China, would you? <laughs> this is the sign of the horns, a curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know. I all over.